Hypnosis can be defined as an amplified state of consciousness. It's characterized by the hypnotic phenomenology of trance and will express itself accordingly to an individual degree of sensibility in each session. Trance is a natural state when mind becomes hyper-focused and when many positive changes can happen to patients by the widened communication between conscious and unconscious mind, opening the responsiveness to a lot of different levels of communication, bringing several experiences of inner connection. Hypnosis can be a tool of self-knowledge, as well as a tool for incrementing clients' cognitive, artistic and sportive performances. Despite that, its most widely known use is for the psychotherapeutic treatment of emotional, psychosomatic and pain disorders. Some years ago, the Brazilian Federal Professional Councils of Medicine, of Psychology and of Odontology approved hypnosis as a legal clinical practice as had also been done in many countries in the world in the middle of the last century. Education, marketing, sport and law are other fields of knowledge which have been improved by the latest developments in hypnosis. Among all therapies, the most ancient registers refer to hypnosis, be it in cavern pictures or in shamanic ceremonial dances or even in healing rituals performed by priests. Since the earliest beginning of history, there is some kind of use of amplified states of consciousness for self-healing in all continents. After many centuries being used in religious rituals and circus stages, trance was brought to scientific debate in universities by the physician Franz Anton Mesmer in Vienna during 1776. Since then, many scientists in European countries have proved with their studies the several properties and applications of classical hypnosis to heal different diseases. Puiseguier, Abaj Faria, Elliotson, Esdale, Braid, Pavlov, Libo, Berheim, Charcot, Freud, Jung, Hull, Spiegel, Weizenhofer and Jana. However, only after the powerful research of Milton Highland Erickson, an American physician and psychologist, was the modern scientific and ethic Ericksonian hypnotherapy founded. From that point, starting at the United States in the 1960s, Hypnosis begins to be considered a legitimate practice by professional societies like those of medicine and psychology. Born in 1901 and deceased in 1980, Milton Highland Erickson was a physician, psychiatrist and psychologist. He was born on December 5th in the city of Aurum in Nevada, United States, and is still considered one of the most important world authorities in hypnosis applied to psychotherapy and medicine. He is the father of modern scientific and ethical hypnosis and strategic brief psychotherapy. If Freud was the genius of analysis and Jung the genius of synthesis, Erickson was the genius of the use of the knowledge produced by those two authors in the psychotherapy clinic second son among 11 brothers and sisters, when he was 18, Milton Erickson contracted tetraplegical poliomyelitis. That was the main reason for his interest in therapeutic methods and techniques, which could help in human self-surpassing. His work has led hypnotherapy to be recognised as a psychotherapeutic technique after 1956 in the United States. Since then, its application has helped to relieve human suffering, substituting anaesthesia, controlling pain, easing anxiety and suppressing traumas. Modern hypnosis has created new ways of therapy that possibly would never be solved by other means. Milton Erickson was married to the psychologist Elizabeth Moore Erickson, with whom he had eight children. Among them, Betty, Alice and Roxana today are still working at the board of directors of the foundation which was created in honour of their father in the year of his death. During all this time, the foundation has been directed by the President Jeffrey Tsaik. In 1960, Milton Erickson founded the American Society of Clinical Hypnosis, where he taught. In his classes, while he explained classical hypnosis, he started to assert his innovative ideas. The immediate acceptance of and identification with his approaches 
was so sound that his earliest students, physicians and psychologists, prompted him to share his knowledge. Ericsson started to publish books and articles, and with the help of some disciples, between 1950 and 1980, the amount of his studies embodied more than 300 publications. Today, this body of texts is near 1,000, including those of disciples of 4th and 5th generation. Milton Erickson died in 1980, but his contribution to health studies was awarded. The same disciples who had given him incentive to publish his ideas founded the Milton Erickson Foundation in Phoenix, Arizona. It's a non-profit organisation which enlists more than 120 institutes around the world teaching and sharing Ericksonian approaches in the fields of health and education. Ricardo Faix, a physician who graduated from the Federal University of Rio Grande do Sul, Brazil, and who achieved his MD at the University of São Paulo, is the founder of the Centre for the Chemical Drug Dependent from Porto Alegre in 1987. Researching the best techniques for the treatment of drug abusers, he got in touch with hypnotherapy and immediately was seduced by this approach, mainly for its quick and efficient results. Fikes started studying European classical hypnosis. After some years, he discovered that the strongest stream was in the States, more precisely in Phoenix, with the naturalist approaches. During the same period, while treating his patients, Dr. Fikes intuited that the Ericsson hypnosis had many reasons to be developed in the south of Brazil. During the 90s, he invited the psychologist Marcia Alencar a family therapist with whom he had maintained professional exchanges for a long time, and the physician Vittorio Veloso, his professor of classical hypnosis, to found the Milton Erickson Brazil Sul Institute. But his professor, an elderly man, died one month before the Institute's foundation. On October 18, 1997, the South Brazil Milton H. Erickson Institute was founded. On that occasion, Mr. Jeffrey Tsaik was present to celebrate the event and to give the Institute its official certificate. And I'm very pleased to be presenting for Ricardo and Marcia. E eu fico muito satisfeito de estar sendo apresentado pelo Ricardo e pela Marcia. And to announce the formation of the Milton Erickson Institute of Southern Brazil e anunciar, estou muito feliz de poder anunciar a fundação do Instituto Milton Erickson, de mais um Instituto Milton Erickson no Brasil. One year later, Marcia Alencar left the Institute to follow a different path and found another Institute at Florianópolis, capital of the neighboring state of Santa Catarina. The Milton Erickson Brazil Sul Institute is located at the Intercity Office Premium in Porto Alegre. The godfathers and godmothers of the Institute were the psychologists José Augusto Mendonça, Angela Cotta and Maria Margarida de Carvalho, besides the medical doctor Sofia Bauer. The midwife of the Institute was Marília Baker, a master in social work. The consultative board comprises professionals from many different areas. In psychology, Magali Hoysa. In dentistry, Gabriel Castro. In gerontology, 
Marcelo Zabaleta, in Pediatrics, Gilberto Gomes, in Mind-Body Therapy, Fabio Moore, in Anesthesiology, Paulo Evangelista, in Traditional Medicine, Gladstone Proller, in Acupuncture, Claudio Rodrigues, and in Family Therapy and Education, Dolores Bordignon. Besides those partners, Adriana Ribeiro and Rafael Gonçalves work in administrative support. In its 10 years of history, the Institute has graduated seven groups in Porto Alegre, two in Recife, two in Campo Grande and one in Cuiabá, for a total of 156 certified hypnotherapists. Besides the courses, more than 30 national and international workshops were conducted by Ricardo Faix in 12 Brazilian capitals and also in Mexico and in Argentina. It was a great honor in October of 1997 to come to Porto Alegre and to be present at the founding of the Institute. The Milton Erickson Foundation has more than 125 institutes around the world and we must have at least 12 institutes in Brazil. I'm very grateful for all of the efforts of the experts who have founded institutes in Brazil and especially proud of Ricardo for his efforts in bringing Ericksonian practice to uh, southern Brazil and really throughout Brazil. During all these years, the Institute has been constantly present in many media vehicles through interviews, papers and publicities. This exposure has increased the importance of hypnosis to our community and culture, and helped to form new therapists. All this work has enhanced Ericksonian ideals, being a contribution for a world of more joy, peace and love. I have a great pleasure in receiving Dr. Ricardo Faix. He is a medical hypnotherapist and he is president do Instituto Milton Erickson Brasil Sul, que já vamos saber o que é. A entrevista que fiz aqui com o médico e hipnoterapeuta, Dr. Ricardo Faix, foi um sucesso. Muito Doutor, bem. um prazer lhe ter mais uma vez aqui. Oh, Isso que eu digo que o pessoal de casa faz o programa, ah, lhe viu aqui outras vezes, isso. pediu para o senhor voltar, o senhor está voltando. A hipnose que eu pratico hoje é uma hipnose chamada Ericksoniana. A hipnose nova dos Estados Unidos, descendente de Milton H. Erickson. E hoje dou curso pelo Brasil inteiro, dou curso no México, uhum. né? A gente tem um, um instituto de formação de pós-graduação em hipnose clínica só para médicos e psicólogos. Diga o nome do instituto para nós. Instituto Milton Erickson. No Brasil, nós temos 14 institutos de formação. No primeiro mundo está crescendo muito. A, no, a rede que nós fazemos parte, Tânia, tem, está em 35 países, 130 institutos. O nosso instituto já tem 10 anos. Eu só gostaria de repetir, então, Isso. Tá? O, 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 o telefone de inscrição para a hipnose científica, o Papa da Hipnose Mundial em Porto Alegre pela primeira vez. 
Nós estamos lançando em primeira mão para dentistas, vai ser um curso de habilitação de 120 horas. Sim. A hipnose moderna ericksoniana, que é a hipnose americana, ela é democrática, ela é de dentro do paciente para fora, ela é uma hipnose dialogada com o paciente, ela é sob medida, ela é para o presente orientada para o futuro. Uhum. Ela utiliza os recursos do paciente, pensa o inconsciente do paciente, não como um cadinho de terrores ou de desejos irrefreáveis. Ela pensa o inconsciente, isto sim, como uma montanha de recursos utilizáveis para transformar situações de dor e dificuldade. As principais indicações para o teu público que está atento, uhum. né? é, para os nossos telespectadores, são assim, ó, os transtornos da ansiedade. Né? Pânico, estresse pós-traumático, né? doença somatoforme, fobias, é uma maravilha, né? é, dores agudas e crônicas, principalmente dores crônicas. Né? E também as doenças psicossomáticas, aquelas doenças que a mente faz Cria. no corpo.